today on the ANA podcast, we sit down with the incredibly talented Obe Reed as we talk about his brand new project, Linden Ave. We talk about creating worlds and then living within them sonically, and also put Seattle on the map just a little bit. Come on now, that's the ANA podcast. What's good, y'all? It's Obe Reed live in the flesh. Hey, you know, I'm an alternative hip-hop artist from Seattle, Washington, 22 years old, just coming off the release of my project, Linden Ave. The Wonder Drop Kid. Two. The Wonder Kid. <laughs> the protege, the prodigal son, the prophet. <laughs> no, but, you know, this project, it really means a lot. It's crazy to see the progression of myself and the way people have received the project because, you know, over the last two and a half years, I've been building it and... Uh, it, it's crazy because last year, at the beginning of the year, uh, I wanted to be super intentional with the way that we rolled it out. So, like, everything that you saw was thought a year in advance. And I have, like, a 76-page presentation that I made of, like, everything from, like, how I want the videos to look, yeah. what I want the project I think to I was accomplish. Looking at some of it. I yeah. think I was looking at it. Yeah. yeah. That's sick, dude. Yeah, That's like, really fits, like, cool. literally everything yeah. because I wanted to make sure that I the way that I was perceived was exactly how I wanted it to be. And I wanted it to be authentic to me. So trying to tap into everything. Like we even do like the running content, like, cause you know, I'm a big runner. People hate running, but <laughs> I like it. And so you can live vicariously. You can run through me, you know? I love it, bro. Uh, uh, Intentional storytelling with integrity. Yeah. That's beautiful, dude. So we're going to do this lightning round real quick. You're going to have 30 seconds. Bro. 30 seconds? Yeah. Okay, yeah. I'm just going to wrap these up. Not for not for all of them, but just for each individual one. So we'll yeah. reset it. We'll reset it after <laughs> I was, everyone. I thought you meant 30 seconds for every question to answer. I said, dang, we're going to get two all right. words in. All right, just to kind of, I think, build out this, like, build out this world, how we're yeah. talking about. I know we were just talking about it a little bit inside, but for the first one, what do you think currently in 30 seconds sum up the song landscape of Seattle right now in terms Sonic of the music landscape. scene out there. What do you think people are doing well? What do you think is going to happen these next couple years? Yeah, 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 so I think what's dope about Seattle is we do have such a vast array of sonic sound, like all the way from hip hop to pop to EDM to, you know, the grunge scene. But what we have in common is the storytelling aspect, which I think you can hear a lot through my music. It's like you listen to an artist from Seattle, you could tell because they tell their story and they rep Seattle really hard, like, which is dope. Yeah. And as the more that we get eyes on the city, it's like people going to realize that we got something going on. And so, yeah, just the storytelling aspect of a lot nice, of stuff. And nice. Yeah, real raw hip hop in terms of that. Word. I can dig it. Yeah, there's a real pride of like being from there for real. That's yeah. really sick. My girl's from there, bro, and she does like now. all the time. But oh, come on now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, I mean, that's that's like all all that comes out of her mouth, bro, is just on some like, you know, when you meet a New Yorker and like they won't let you shut, like they won't shut the fuck up around like a slice of pizza. Oh my god. And they're gosh, just like, yeah. oh, you, know, send me a pizza, you don't know about pizza. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, bro, like she really fucking reps that city, man. She loves that place of like, man, like there's a spot in Seattle, or, like out in Seattle, or, like this is prettier in Seattle, and like. Yeah, yeah. And like, I believe it, bro. Like, she talks about it very passionately. So it's cool. Like, now talking to y'all, like, there's a real pride from it. So that's what it's sick. That's yeah. cool. And, like, the culture there, like you're saying. Mm -hmm. What does your writing and, like, creative process look like? Because, like, your songs, they are very intentional. And, yeah. like you were saying with, with Black Kids, like, you're crafting that over, over the span of two years and, and some change. Yeah. So does that always look for you, like, very intentional where you're sitting down and you're like, I know where I want to end before I start? Or is there, like, sometimes an element of just, like, fuck you, bro, this shit is fun? Yeah, I think it's, there's, like, a mix, right? Like, yeah. my main one is crazy. I start with the title of a song. Nice. Like, I'll that's start sick. with the title. Okay, that's cool as fuck. And then I'll base the song like skincare. Yeah. Like I was like, oh, it'd be dope to have a song called skincare. Yeah. And then just made the song. I was like, oh, and I wanted it to be about self care and all yeah, of that. Yeah. Like that's my main thing. I'm a very like I'm a write these lyrics type yeah. of person. Yeah. But also Weston, like that whole song was just freestyle, like punch in. Nice. And nice. you know that song is definitely more like ego driven like oh i'm a you know i'm a talk yeah, for a second a space for it, exactly a space for it. Yeah. And, and so like i think there's a testament to both both sides like oh i got a message that i'm trying to say i want to yeah. express myself in this way but also it's like how do i feel right in this moment like what is the energy in the studio right yeah, now absolutely produced from me right well, at least that for, for yeah. sure yeah and so it's a little bit of both but definitely like i think starting with a title is that's always cool. fun like, that's sick yeah, yeah i'm gonna start doing that that's fucking sick i've never yeah. went about it like that bro i just kind of like every time it's been it's really just sitting down and like 
the first, it'll be like a phrase that like comes to mind. And it's yeah. just like, duh, duh, duh. and I'm like, okay, that's like, that. cause again, we're talking about like these moments and it's like, oh, that's yeah. a moment. Oh, cool, now I'll like craft around this moment and yeah. flesh this out a little bit. But like equally, I feel like starting with the title of the song is sick too. Cause then you have a whole infrastructure for like where you're going thematically, like in the song without necessarily like, oh, I gotta think of where every sentence I want is. But like, as long as it revolves around this central theme, like how you're talking, yeah. damn, that's cool, bro. That's a cool way to go about it. Yeah, I also like to do a lot of like, talking in yeah. my songs too like in hometown hero we got moments of like just talking skin or not skincare uh where the money grows like mm. at the end you yeah, know yeah. we got some talking it's like i think it's dope to show people oh it's not just me i'm for a sure. regular person yeah, too bro, like for sure for i got sure. A, i got a voice that's not just spin bars yeah bro unless like yeah whether it's just like on some spoken word shit where it's like artistically talking or even just yeah. like speaking bro like i had a producer he was a one time we were like sitting down just like cooking shit and he was just like bro just let the intro run like just let like just let the music come in and yeah. i was like nah <laughs> <laughs> and not, like not always obviously there's a time yeah. and a place but it's like bro i got such wicked adhd anyways that i'm just like let's get this going like let's get the energy Facts. up before the first verse like bro. let's start it let's rock it in so i could definitely like i could definitely understand bro, how you're saying literally it. like i swear for artists we can't just like get <laughs> on the mic bad, and bro. not be saying I've something i've had to like intentionally leave space and like nah it's okay to just like let the strings go for a second it's all Facts. right but you're gonna be all right Facts. like it's the okay be like bro just step away from the <laughs> yeah. mic for a second <laughs> come back he just took the vocals out like bro what the fuck yeah. what's going on yeah. damn word all right then what the fuck is the skincare routine bro skincare give me that pharrell shit break bro, it down we got the bioma foaming cleanser bro, look straight into this camera yeah. right we got the know, bioma foaming cleanser <laughs> and it. then we run with the ordinary toner this is this is a nighttime routine this is a nighttime routine and then we go to the, oh, you got an am and a pm huh you got oh, an am yeah. and a pm okay so the am this shit is glistening bro, bro. <laughs> this shit is glistening the am is mostly like cleansing and then sunscreen and moisturizer like okay because I'm not trying to put too much on my face and then go outside and yeah, do a yeah, lot. But yeah, like yeah. nighttime is all about, you know, preparing for the next day. Yeah, so yeah, we got yeah. the toner. We got the, oh, I'm about to butcher this. Hydrolonic acid. Yeah, don't even have to do that. Yeah, I got my little vitamin C pump too. Yeah, okay, I just started C, using that, bro. bro. I just started using that. Come shit made me now. feel like a princess. Oh, so you in the skincare way too? <laughs> not like you, bro. You look like Pharrell. <laughs> Oh oh my God. God. I'm trying, bro. I just got put on the little hyaluronic acid and shit. Yeah. That's like my new shit, but my girls. And disrespect is crazy. <laughs> We go rose hip oil mixed with uh, my moisturizer. Yeah. The rose water is bougie. Yeah. Where are you getting that from? That's not a Target uh -huh. find. That's that's very well, they much. They got it at Target though. Really? They do. Okay. Bro, Target underrated. <laughs> Target is underrated. They got the skincare section going crazy. That's where I got my cleanser from. I'm not even gonna lie. That's so funny, bro. I can't go into Target because, bro. Oh, I shouldn't even say this on camera. That's okay. It's like not even that serious, bro. I dude, I got. I'm a petty theft, bro. I'm a petty bro. thief, bro. It's bad, bro. bro it's from bad. Target, though? No, but that's the thing. I had to stop because... <laughs> hey, he building the case, bro. In the break room, Dude, they got I your phone that. on. I saw that shit, bro. I was scrolling. Like, you know how the TikToks just be talking to you? Yeah. Like, like, it's in your head. I'm, like, sitting there. I'm like, damn, bro. Like, I probably shouldn't be taking from Target. Like, I've been feeling sus recently. Like, scroll one up. It's like, here's why the fuck you should never steal from Target. Yeah. I was like, damn. Bro, but really, yeah, bro, that's how I be scared. Because, because... That's what started the little skincare wave. I was just like, it's just free. I'll just go in and yeah, it's just grab some free. It's not free, brother. Get you, and that's not good. Anyways, yeah. maybe we cut that out. But they haven't got you yet, right? No, nah, bro. But I had. That's what I'm saying. I had this feeling, bro, and it started getting to a point where it was bad. I had to like check myself, like, like if I if I couldn't find like a good time to and it, bro, it's petty shit. Like I'm telling you, I'm a little bitch. Like I'm a little bitch, bro. I'm not stealing like anything worth stealing. <laughs> but like if I go into the Target and I'm not like coming out with a deodorant or something, like I started feeling yeah. slided, and yeah. I was like. I was, like I didn't make the most like, of my target. <laughs> I was like, how they about to do me like this, bro? Like, like I, I would be angry and shit. So I was like, all right, bro, I got to rethink my habits. Like, I'm not I'm not building good neuron pathways. Yeah. It's just bad, bro. I'm going to pass this on to my children. Oh, God, that's crazy. Anyways, 
<laughs> All right, bro. Let's fucking get into it. On the way over here, ran the entire thing top to bottom. Like yeah. I said, I've been getting little like snippets and stuff, and it's been super, super hard. Like, I mean, the video production is obviously ill too, but like going a step further of like I've obviously noticed like the moments. You're like very good at creating these moments, and so being able to listen to those in a cohesive structure, like in the way that you intended, was really yeah. sick. And like I said, like that little four song run is so crazy. Oh. It's just bop, 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 and like it's really tight to really feel like you're included on that world for longer than like one song and i think that's something that's super underrated is like album structure and the way yeah. that stuff is laid out and something that people really aren't necessarily paying the most attention to in like a singles single led song like in music industry you yeah know what I mean? it's like it's very there so it's cool that you still are taking with that so to kind of dive into the project if you want to just give like a brief kind of synopsis of of Linden Ave, like in its entirety. Yeah. What does it mean to you? What yeah. does it mean? What do you want people to gain from it after listening? Yeah, so you know, Linden Ave is the street that I grew up on. Like that's I still live there. Like that's just where I am. And so everything that's on the song was just I wanted to get every aspect of who I am. You know, we hit the you know. Black pride, black excellence. We hit the the skincare and the self care, yeah, like yeah. my mental health. We hit like with where the money grows in in Western. That's self reflection on who my ego and what it means to be me and how I feel internally. And so the whole project, I want people to just get a better view of me. It's my first project that I really feel like I'm proud of, and like I feel like represents me. I feel like I found my voice. Nice. And so. As people listen through, like we did the single structure in two packs. So we released like a lead single. I was noticing that. And then yeah. we did like a two pack. Mm -hmm. So that single will get re released yeah. in, with another track. And so each of end. those had its own like theme. So like Where the Money Grows in Weston was the first one. And that was in a project called Out of Real Estate because I felt like I was not outgrowing my situation, but I feel like I wasn't fitting in anymore. Mm. And then we got Affirmative Action, which was Black Kids and Dance Party, which is all about Black Pride, Black Injustices, you know. And then we had uh, May Showers, which was all about mental health. You know, May is Mental Health Month, and it came yeah. out in May. And Sky is Falling is about, you know, feeling like the world is crumbling yo. and like. Yo. <laughs> That song is fucking sick. Bro. Not to cut you off, that shit is sick. When you cut it off, like again, bro, like again, like not like not to be a broken record for real, bro. But that is just what I talk to like everybody about, every artist, like all of it, like. And not that there's not integrity in the songwriting, but the moments you're creating are just so yeah. sick. Like you go through that, like the the first kind of refrain of it, and then it's just like how, like yeah. and that shit is so tight. Bro. It's like how, it just like takes you out for a second. It's like yeah. it's super sick. Anyways, keep going. Yeah, no, it, I mean, one of my favorite parts of the whole project is actually in Skies Falling. At the end of the first verse, I'm like, yo, if this gets messed up over something yeah, dumb, yeah, yeah. I'm going to be pissed. pissed. Yeah, I'm going to be pissed. It's like, bro, if I mess this up yeah. off of just something, yeah. off of my insecurities yeah, yeah. or something like that, like, what yeah. you say, fucking 20 years old, so, so, yeah. taxes? They ain't taught me about yeah, taxes. Yeah, 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 that's sick. That's yeah. really sick, bro. <laughs> and so, yeah, the whole project is just like a culmination of all the experiences that I feel like have led me to like the beginning of my journey. Like, I mm. feel like the day that project dropped was the beginning of my journey. Like, yeah, we released music at the beginning, but that was still me growing. Yeah. And that was still us experimenting and figuring Finding it out project. as we go. And yeah. then it's like, okay, we reached this point. We reached the beginning. Now we're running. You thought we was running back then. Now it's time to really run. That's beautiful. And yeah, I just want like MP3, which is the intro, was the last track that I made. Nice. And what's dope about it is when I made it, I was feeling like imposter syndrome, heavy, which I feel like you might be able to relate to like as an artist. Bro, bro. Like, yeah, yeah. I course. had nine songs done off the project, getting towards the end, and I was like. Is this it? Like, is this what a? Is this really what I want to stand on? Like, are people going to accept me for me? And I made that track, and like, we was listening to "Stars" by JID, and he's super like introspective on that track, mm -hmm. and it was like, I feel like. I need to get some stuff off my chest yeah. before before I feel like this project is really complete. And so having that be the last song that I made while I'm dealing with all this imposter syndrome, while I got all the oh, tracks that already that so done, good. it was like. All right, so it's so complete fucking, now. It exactly. Yeah, it's it. complete now. Nice, bro. Nice. Yeah. That's really sick. I'm happy for you that like you had that moment that you found that. That's beautiful for sure. Uh, That's yeah. sick. Yeah, I know exactly what that feels like. That's sick. Yeah. And for it to come like at the time when you needed it too and not like the months, yeah. and, months and months before, especially because oh, yeah. it's like you are definitely proud of the body of work, absolutely. But like you said, it's just like, but it's not 
the, the circle isn't like fully completed yet. Yeah. Just to like create that last chain link and like fade up. That's but, sick. And, and like in the in the hook of that, I said, I broke my MP3 because all the voices lied to me. And it's like that whole time while I'm creating, I'm listening to other people's music, talk about the journey, how great it was. Look at me, like I did this, da 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 da. Meanwhile, I'm like, yo, I'm struggling, <laughs> dude. There is no way y'all made it seem this easy. How long did it take to cut that one? Oh, bro, that one came out in an hour. Really? From nice. production to okay. finishing the verse. Nice. Like, he produced the first loop. I took, I put on my headphones, went out of the studio, cranked it out. Like, Ew. like, yeah, it was crazy because it felt like, okay, this was meant to be. Like, myself, yeah, I was, absolutely. It, it, the universe or whatever was speaking yeah. through me in that yeah. moment. And, yeah, man, like, it was just dope. Like, the whole project just... It feels like not a weight off my shoulders, but like I feel like people see me and hear me yeah. now. And especially in the city, like I was trying to do the most. Like I was telling you, like we did those open sessions. Like I was trying to start things that I didn't see happening, but I'm the young kid. Like yeah. I had a I had a completely different name, bro. Like I just changed my name in November. Really? Yeah. Were you rocking at it before? Bro, moon drop. Oh my <laughs> gosh, no. In December? Huh? That was in December? That was in November. Oh, shit. That, that was, was the best November. decision you ever made, bro. Oh, my bro. gosh. You ain't got to tell me, bro. <laughs> what? That's your, that's, your, that's your actual name? Yeah. Over? Yeah. The, bro, what? I know. <laughs> Who are I you, know. bro? What are you doing? Just, that's so sick, bro. bro. And it was crazy about that name. is like, I was just at church camp, bro. And my couch, I freestyled in front of the camp. <laughs> and then the couch was like, you need a rap name. He said, Moon Drop. I said, I, I ran with it for like so many years. It didn't nothing it meant not a single thing that's so crazy I was just like yeah. that's so crazy <laughs> In seventh grade, they call me White Tic Tac, bro. White hey, oh, Tic Tac? Yeah, boy. And you ran with it? Oh, bro, I was freestyling all in middle school under that shit, bro. I pulled up, they knew what the fuck it was. It's about to get minty in that bitch. For minty. real. For real, oh, bro. Oh, my God. They knew what it was when I walked in. That's fucking hilarious. So, who did it? You did the cover art? No. Uh, who shot the Our, cover art? So, we got a photographer. She didn't come down. But okay, where? It's Amory. She is nuts. That shit is crazy. Where did that come from, uh, from like conceptually? The cover art. You always kind of knew that's what you wanted it to look like, or I mean, oh, obviously, that's are you, on you talking there. about the uh, the uh, project? Yeah, the project cover yeah, art. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think the cover was dope because you know the whole project was about me and you know figuring out myself and and you know learning myself and so and, and especially in the city, right? And so with the cover art, it's dope because I always tell people it's like, am I leading the charge or am I running away? Right. And, and, you know, I'm out in the front and we got all these people from the community. Like we just like I was like, I want this to feel like a community it's thing. And Rocky. Yeah, exactly. We just got so many people are giving us weird looks as they drive by. Like, fuck it. And so, the, yeah, the, the conception of the pri the, the uh, cover just like came from all of that. It's like internally I was having that dilemma. It's like, oh, am I? Do I want to lead this charge for my city, or is it like, do I feel like I need to escape? And like, ultimately for me, it's like I'm trying to lead the charge. Like we were talking about earlier, like yeah. Seattle got so much talent. It's we already got people that have been popped from the city, but it's now now we need somebody that's like, you know, we need that infrastructure yeah. and that business, that education, because like people are in the studios and people are doing their thing, refining their craft, but it's like there's so much beyond that. Like that is twenty percent of what yeah. we gotta do. Right. I could have asked that question, you could have like crafted some bullshit ass like, <laughs> yeah. like it just looked cool. <laughs> oh but no, gosh. but that I mean that's sick. And that would have been cool, bro. Like if, if it just looked cool, like hell yeah, it does look cool. Yeah. Like that would have been fun. But like the fact that you do have like an underlying truth for everything is, is really sick, bro. And I think yeah. we'll like serve really well in the long run. Something that like we're always talking about around here, bro, is just the idea of like the underdog and how like important it is to maintain this idea of being like a man of the people. You know what I mean? And yeah. it's like almost like Robin Hood esque ass yeah. figure. But in order to do that, like you have to create something that's bigger than even though we're creating moments, you yourself as the artist have to be bigger than the moment. Mm -hmm. And a lot of these people are just like Yo, I made this in fucking band lab yesterday and like now I'm gonna put it out and then it pops and it's like cool, bro, that's fine. But then like the next day it's like, okay, now like you have to be an entrepreneur and mm -hmm. you have to be a, a real performer and like you have to you're expected to have these worlds and shit and like there's these people, bro, they have I mean three, four, five, six million monthly listeners and like yeah. they pop out for a show, they're selling out three hundred people and it's like 
you watch them on stage, it's like, bro, if, like if I knew all the lyrics, I could get up there and do that shit right now. Yeah, you know what I, mean? I could go do that Perform right now. Perform over there, back in trash, yeah, like what exactly. is it, karaoke? Yeah. <laughs> what are we doing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like saying all that to say, bro, that that when there is something real that you're building and something to like actually latch onto and then live inside of and and feel um, like being able to relate to something is huge. You know what I mean? And so you yeah. you you are building this entire like sonic space for people to grow up with and like be a part and also evolve with which is so huge and something that like people don't have today because things are so superficially focused on moments and okay cool now we got to make the exact like this a song that sounds the exact same but it's yeah. a little different and like mm. you know and it's just it loses like all the artistic integrity yeah you know? And so, like, don't get it twisted again. Like, the moments are fun to create. Mm-hmm. Like, the baby Keems are, are phenomenal yeah. at it. And, and the, like, the Drakes are just doing the, the what, what, what? And, like, there's a space for that, absolutely. Yeah. But there is, like, also a space for authentically telling your story and, and yeah. trying to get a narrative across. So it's it's sick they do that. And absolutely, bro, that'll serve you so, so much fucking better in, in the long run, yeah. for sure. Yeah, yeah. And, like, I, I got these, uh, this term that I co- uh, coined, romanticized authenticity. I saw that. That's so sick. Yeah, yeah that's so sick. And it's like, you know, I just want the whole experience of the project is like, this is me, bro. This is places that I just been, like I just been around. Like, especially we did all those visualizers. And like, you could you could pull up to those places right now. It's yeah. like those are accessible places. Yeah. But we made them seem bigger than life. Like right. all the songs, like those are little moments that we take for granted in life. It's like I, I'm no different. And I think for an artist, there's like three reasons. Or that people will connect with you, right? They want to be you, they want to get with you, or they find some sense of shared experience. Yeah, man. And I think that's really where, at least, I feel like my people are are, are drawn to me. It's like that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to find my people. I'm trying to t- find my family. Like everything I do is a family affair. Every show that I every show that I do. Uh, I'll do my first two songs, and then you know I will talk, and then I say, you know, I want y'all to get to know me. I want to get to know y'all, so we're going to take the next time. You're going to take 10 to 15 seconds. You're going to turn to your neighbor. You're going to learn their name. You're going to come up with a secret handshake. You're going to do something. And then everybody's like, it's a community now. It's not individuals that pulled up to a show to see an artist. It's like, we are all in this together experiencing this music. And so... Yeah, just romanticize authenticity. Like, live your life and and don't take it for granted, right? Ew. Ew, absolutely. Yeah, that's really sick. That was one of the most, like, liberating things for me, bro, is, like, understanding that, you know, like, it doesn't all have have to happen tomorrow. It's Mm -hmm. this, like, idea of this brick-a-day structure, you know what I mean? And, like, as long as you're just laying one down every single day, like, inevitably you're going to move towards that. But it's not about, like... Bro, I could give a fuck if I'm ever on Billboard or if we're ever doing whatever, but like yeah. if the shows are selling out and you're doing 1,500, 2,000 people a show, the merch sells out every time you put it on the website. It's yeah. like all this shit is about is cultivating a community of people who who like genuinely feel heard and like yeah. feel cared for. And like if you have that, bro, you made it. Like everything else is extra. You know what I mean? You can work on that and continue, continuously try to. Uh, expand that like omnidirectionally and like just always kind of push those boundaries out but like at its core bro if you have that that's all there is to this shit like right. absolutely bro because there's people that are fucking i mean there's people that have the numbers that aren't making half the bread of somebody who has yeah. like a real ass community you know right. what i mean yeah. there's dudes out here making like fucking 10 15 20 racks on like the patreon or like the paid subscription type shit because they got like real energy it's kind of expanding on some of these themes that we're talking about on this album specifically what personas were you really working to to like push across yeah i think that every man for sure yeah because like you know i was talking about romanticized authenticity but also like i think the hero too like you were saying man of the people like in hometown hero i talk about I'm not I might not be the hero that they wanted, but I'm the hero that they needed so bad. Like yeah, yeah. we need somebody who's really like about the community. Mm-hmm. And so I think yeah, it's mostly those two and like the jester, like when we do vlogs and stuff, like are just like my natural personality, like I feel like that's where that comes in. And yeah, just just being authentic and I think naturally I'm drawn to to those ones. Yeah. And um I think one thing that was really hard for me was the personality side. Like mm. we like, I or I liked everything to be just so clean and yeah, like qu- high quality yeah, yeah, and dude. like let me get my bars off or like, uh, you know, I'm a rapper, I'm an artist, I'm a yeah, hip hop artist, yeah. right? But then, like, 
I'd kick it with the homies and I'm just like some goofy dude. Right, right. And it's like people don't see that on yeah, the internet. Yeah. And so just but being they able love to, to see that shit. Yeah, yeah. And just being able to play into that more yeah. and, and be more comfortable just like yeah. being raw with it. Mm-hmm. That's a, I'm on the same shit, bro. That's some of the best advice I ever got. I was talking to um one of the homies and we we're just kind of talking about how we're like going about marketing and, and all this shit. And it was just like this shit is tight. Like, it's always great. You know, I'm like making these movies, like these yeah. like borderline, like one minute music videos, oh, like, and literally. you know, like getting real cinematic with yeah, shit. Yeah, bro, your content is crazy. Thank you, thank you. I wasn't fishing for that, but <laughs> if you might, no, you said I wasn't. <laughs> thank you, bro. Uh, I didn't no, say but, No, but exactly to like what you were saying, bro, it's like we were talking about it and it was just like, this shit feels very produced. Like it feels very much so like there was, you know, a few people here putting like minds into it. And that's really, really cool. But like the number one thing that can just kill this shit is when people feel like they're being sold to mm-hmm. and like people hate being sold to and so it got to a point where it's like everybody's making shit like this yeah. and everybody's doing the little like cap cut lyrics and shit so at a point it's yeah. just like it, it, get, it got so much easier to like sniff out like right away oh this dude's marketing and this dude's trying to sell yeah. me so it was kind of like how do we approach it from a, a personality standpoint and really like again work on building and cultivating that group of people that like are genuinely invested in, yeah. in like the fan base and the foundation of it you know what I mean yeah yeah, and I think like doing that alternative, uh, like alternative content, yeah, right? And like yeah. just talking, like even just sitting in front of your phone and talking yeah, to the camera, for sure. like for sure, it's it just does so much to yeah, help people bro. feel like, oh, you are a person yeah, that I yeah. feel like I could connect with, right? And too, like I, I can't speak for you, but for me, bro, I just be, I, you want everything to look how you exactly how you have in your head, down to like the profile grid where you're like, does yeah. that look like it should be on there, like with the other bro, shit? Like, does literally. that like really make sense like that? And like something that uh, Don and I like have been throwing back and forth is like, it's good enough, bro. Like yeah. it's like it's fucking good enough. And bro. like again, not to get close to confusing that with like getting lazy or complacent mm-hmm. or or like passing off an objectively bad product but oh, like never. to a point it's just like just like oh bro like yeah. it's good enough man Thanks. like just give it to him <laughs> and so like and a lot of the times too bro like we'll go out and spend two hours composing one 30 second video when like i could just fucking throw this up and like walk around and lip sync it for a second and that yeah. goes just as crazy yeah. you know what i mean and that like does the same numbers does the same amount of like advancement to the career but it's just like we just be getting in our heads so much of like ah oh, fuck yeah would travis do this like no like yeah. fucking, you know is gambino gonna be like yeah. throwing up a little but fuck it bro like it's just that's not the era anymore you know nah. what i mean it's, it's yeah. definitely like an evolved oh, an evolved space how do you in so intentionally like going about creating your art and and the message that you have behind it and then also obviously very predominantly being in this like diy fast fashion kind of you know just throw it up gets big creating these moments how are you like separating your self-worth from what you're seeing statistically or you know all that stuff and how do you continue to you know kind of keep that wall up and be jaded to like numbers and not really give a fuck about that stuff? yeah man like I feel like it, I wasn't always like that for surely, but I actually took a break from music for like a couple months. Like social media too. Like mm. I just lived, like when was lived that? life. That was end of 2021. Okay. Like I had just gotten like a distro deal with SoundCloud and Pharrell's team. Like they picked up my song Loose Change because it did like numbers on TikTok. Yeah. And so then my mindset was like, yeah, numbers. Like, yeah. oh, people yeah. are seeing it. I can build now. And like as the numbers started to increase, my mental health just went down because I didn't have that balance and I was putting out content. I was like, oh, that didn't do well. That sucks. Like, oh, what if I never make a I have a moment like this again? Oh my gosh. I'm so scared. Don't of start fucking freaking out, cause I'll start freaking bro, out, bro. I'm so scared. I was of keeping bees. the cool guy shit, cause I thought you were about to, bro. I don't no. fuck with the bees no. either, bro. I ain't never been stung once. You never been stung, no, bro. Oh, when I was like ten, I was on a pogo stick and I got stung in the neck and on fell a pogo on my head. stick. <laughs> <laughs> My mental health was just at a like a terrible spot. And so I took those months off just to like find myself and live and detach myself from those numbers. And my my angel number is actually two two two. And that stands for balance, harmony, and alignment. And so, okay. you know, I've aligned myself with my goals and all of that. I found balance in my life between like, you know, work and life, as much as like music is like everything that I want to do, my passion, my work, like all of that. 
I still need to have something outside of that yeah, and man. like feed my artists, yeah. like my inner artists. Like yeah. I need to live you and do You got to go through stuff. experiences. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And so, and then like being in, in harmony with the people around me in my community. And so, yeah, it was just finding myself and finding that balance. And that allowed me to allow, allow my music to do a slow burn, bro. Yeah. Like I, the music that I make, is spit, especially, is like, this. it's not viral TikTok music. Sure. It's not like, Something that like while we may have TikToks that like go crazy or do some numbers, it's not like oh this sound bite is yeah, gonna go right, right, nuts right. and everybody's gonna use it. But it's like we building a narrative and bringing people along with us that are willing to invest and like our family members. Like I was yeah. saying, like they want to be a part of it. Yeah, and like those conversations that I have with people, I feel like are what keeps me going. Like I could tell you are a genuine person that is actually like cares about people and also your art and just life in general. Like, and so having conversations like this with people yeah. is what keeps me going. Like if I have one conversation, like a week that was like this, right. Yeah. Where I get to connect with somebody about music, about life in general, that's all. That's all I want. Type shit. Yeah. You know, like yeah. I don't need 2 million views to tell me that I'm making an impact. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. The in real life shit is definitely like the biggest kind of bring back to the moment of like, yeah. man, because because that shit, bro, like none of that obviously means anything. But like when you have somebody directly in front of you telling you like how the music impacted or just like, yeah. yo, like this song fucking saved my life. You're like, right. bro, shut the fuck up. Like, yeah. no way. Like, no I made way. that in my bedroom, bro. Right. So crazy. Yeah. So crazy. And, and how you were just saying, bro, like. The older I get on some 21 years old type yeah. shit, but the older I get, <laughs> my back be hurting and shit. Uh, but no, nah, bro, like, honestly, the, the more that, like, I've come to really just appreciate genuine conversation, talking to people who are passionate about something. Yeah. Like, that's my all time shit, bro. Like, talking to people about anything, 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 as long as, like, they're passionate about it, it's crazy, bro. And then you start seeing the world through, like, this fucking shroom trip. But, like, you just look around, it's like, bro, somebody's life work was designing this chair. And somebody's Whoa. life work after that was making sure this shed could be straight Whoa. and this sunflower and your bandana. And, Later. like, when you start looking at it like that, like, everybody's got a passion that, that you know what I mean? And that's, like, the real love energy that's like that life uh -huh. energy you can see it like a little twinkle in people's eyes and it's like this is so fulfilling like yeah. this is so like this recharging both of us right now you know what i mean like exactly that's the coolest shit and that's what i've really like come to appreciate like yeah the older i get the okay? older yeah, <laughs> the bro. older you get nah, it, all right yeah it's dope bro people are it's, just crazy yeah, bro yeah. like i mean we came down here there are so many people and i was like Oh, what is the word? Is it Sonder? I think it might. Yeah, yeah, bro, bro, that's that's like, been, I just found out about that word the other yeah. day. That's crazy. It's like everybody has their own, their own life, life and their own experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, it's crazy yeah, to dude, it's too try much. To, it's too much. It's bro. so much. It's so much. Sitting in traffic. I also saw, oh, who was talking about it? Somebody's talking about, it. I think it was just like a stranger on the street. Like, <laughs> they were talking about. How? Yo, some of this shit, bro. No disrespect on some like it's the coolest shit ever. But the way like you like blow on your senses is just awesome, bro. I think it was a stranger on the street, bro. That's he awesome. was talking about like, oh, when someone cuts you off in traffic, don't assume that it's malicious. Mm. Don't oh, I forgot the word that they use. It was like, oh, ignorance or individuality yeah, yeah. from like malicious. Yeah. And that put me in a whole different mindset because I'll be, I be having road rage. I'm not going to lie. I'll be yelling at people sure, in my car. Sure. But it's like, that person didn't even, that person yeah, is they doing something know they completely did it. different. They didn't even know they cut and you they off, don't bro. care yeah. at all. Yeah. Like they, so like, why would I let that affect Just me? Just poisoning yourself. Yeah. Yeah, bro. And yeah, oh, I'm about to, I got another one. I just got these <laughs> go sayings ahead, go that ahead, people bro. just put me on. Go, it's on. Bro said, Holding a grudge is like swallowing poison and expecting the other person to get sick. Yeah. I was like, yo, you, yep. whoa. Right, but that's exactly like, that's so what it real. is. Yeah, right. And yeah, as soon as you take your set, your, your mindset away from, oh, uh, everything's about me, spotlight syndrome. Mm -hmm. Oh, they did that on purpose. Yeah. They did. It, you live so much more free and you connect with people yeah. so much easier. Yeah. You see people's experience. Yeah, especially yeah. too, bro, because like, 
Well, I, like I can't speak for you, but for me, for sure, like a lot of the shit that I find myself getting angry with in other people is usually like, I don't know if this is the right word to use, but like it usually stems from some like some point of inferiority or like insecurity on my end. Like mm -hmm. I'm reflecting that on other people, yeah. you know what I mean? And so what I'm getting angry about is really like a projection of myself. And yeah. so like, I think the best rule of thumb is just like, if you could get to a point to just two things, bro. One, assume that everybody like is only moving out of like a loving intention until yeah. proven otherwise that would do you so right like in terms oh. of i mean i'm not saying like you so right but just in general <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. let me tell you those <laughs> but like like with the traffic shit or all that and two assuming that everybody's like rich beyond their fucking wits like that everybody's got bread and yeah. that'll really like affect how like Dang. you start like treating people and, yeah. and if you just assume that everybody's moving out of love and that everybody's got like dumb fucking bread like yeah. all of a sudden like everybody's just as cool as the next person because Le like legitimate maybe maybe i shouldn't even say rich like in terms of a sense of of like bread and stuff but just assuming that everybody's rich with that like life energy that passion that we're talking about yeah. because then there's like there's excitement and fulfillment in every conversation from fucking jay-z to like the janitor you know yeah. everybody's got something that like they can provide like above anybody like that yeah <sighs> shut the fuck up no don't, don't make me say any more shit i'm done all right let's do this game let's do this game so this is a game that is uncreatively named Spotify Stats. So I have run all y'all's music through a Spotify statistics website. Spotify will give each of your songs a number from zero to 100 based on different categories. So one of the categories is the energy a song has. One of the categories is how danceable the song is. And another category is how positive the track is. So I've ran all y'all's music through this website, and you guys have to guess which song you think is the highest performer in each of those categories. So I've given you the highest performer, sort of like a middle of the road, yeah. and the bottom. So y'all are guessing the top, which is your highest performer in the energy, the danceability, and like the positivity. Okay, so Pert, we are gonna start with the energy. Okay, and the way they describe energy is fast, loud, noisy, uh, yeah. Typically, energetic tracks feel fast, loud, and noisy. For example, death metal has high energy, while a Bach prelude scores on low on the scale. Okay, all right, Willy Wonka, Standards, or 808s and Lidocaine. That's fine, well, babe. 808s and Lidocaine is, is more melodic. That's got to be danceable, right? That's gotta be danceable standards. There's not really even a hook on that in terms of energy, but it, I mean, the baseline has some good energy, but it has to be Willy Wonka for sure. Yeah, yeah, Willy Wonka, that's Willy Wonka. silly. I'm not even a, yeah, 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 yeah. The most energetic track- Don't fucking lie to me. According to Spotify, is, for you- Is not- The standards. What? Yeah. yeah. What? It got a 91 out of 100. Who's making this, bro? <laughs> Who's making this? I got questions. 91 out of 100. Willy nice. Wonka got 62. That was the what? middle. What? And then 808s was the the more chill. Nice. Yeah. A 91. Yes. That's fucking crazy. Yes. Okay, word. Okay. I can live with that. I want to skip ahead to Oblay's energy. Okay. So Oblay, read out. So yeah, read out your songs and then walk us through which one you think is the most energetic. We got Hometown Hero, BFGF, and Black Kids. Oh, it's for surely not BFGF. And if it is, I'm going to be majorly disappointed <laughs> with whoever made this scale. <laughs> Hometown Hero and Black Kids. Hometown Hero is the one where you just you just come in on the verse, yeah. like, blapping, right? Yeah, yeah just yeah. rapping. Yeah, that's just crazy. Oh, it's got to be that. It'd be so, that's I like, know. got the rasp in it so crazy. Yeah, I'm going to go with Hometown Hero, but if it's Black Kids, I'll understand. So... Hometown Hero was your least energetic track. That's not true. Who made this game? That's not true. Who That's not true. Spotify, like, what? Your songs. Oh, That's bro. crazy. This is why this shit ain't been getting the editorials, bro. The whole shit is <laughs> fucked, bro. The whole six of it is fucked. You, you want to guess what was the number one most energetic? It's BFGF. No way. Yeah. yeah. No shot. With a 75. What? Uh, yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's crazy. With, with many of yeah, it's absurd. Wow. All right, run it. Give me this next one. Give me this next one. Give wow. me this next one. I'm about to munch on this. Pert, danceability. Read out. Can you read from here what danceability is? Uh, danceability describes how suitable a track is for dancing based on a combination of musical elements, including tempo, rhythm, stability, beat strength, and overall regularity. That just saying these are buzzwords, bro. <laughs> Liaison, Nasdaq, or Mr. Karma. 
has to be Mr. Karma. But that would be the obvious answer, so it's definitely not that. <laughs> Liaison's like some fucking odd future, like Earl Sweatshirt ass. Yeah. Like, it's like, so it definitely can't be that. Hey, maybe they're dancing. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. NASDAQ <laughs> is sick. There's literally a hook in NASDAQ. We're just not, so I dance with it. He's so I dance Come with on. it. Oh, it's got to be Mr. Karma, though, for sure. The bass line in there is very danceable. 97. To Mr. Mr. Karma. Karma. 97 yeah. dance yeah. Yeah. Wow. Dang. All of a sudden, when you get it right, it feels good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I'm oh, like yeah. okay, okay, Spotify, okay. All right, a point to Pert. <gasps> oh, dang, it's a competition. Dang, oh, okay. Yeah. Yep, now I'm locked he said, in. oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> these are neat. None of these tracks were the ones that I thought were going to be picked for danceability. Oh, gosh. I hope I get a point. I just want one. <laughs> <Y'all>, <laughs> we are Westing, skincare, and two, two, two. What made you put the brackets on uh, over the eye? So that shit is awesome. In the in the hook at the end, I say I care, skincare got nice. a whole routine. Nice. The whole song is about caring about yourself, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I can eliminate. Yeah, can, we get one. We get one hint where you eliminate. You eliminate one. I can eliminate one. Okay. I is, can elim- I'll, I'm gonna eliminate Westing. Right. Skincare. Okay, that was the one that I was going to pick, so I'm glad we eliminated one. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go with 222. 94 out of 100 goes to 222. Hey, your number? good stuff, yes. boy. Nice. Hell yeah. All right, yes. one, one. Let's All right. go. So, valence. I don't even know what that word means. So, there's a, there's a description. A measure, describe. You know what valence means? I never, I don't know what it means. No. Describing the musical positiveness conveyed by a track. <laughs> Tracks with high valence sound more positive. Nice, gotta be butt sex. So this is this is how happy or like positive the song is. Butt sex, Go Purdy, or NASDAQ. It's gotta be Go Purdy. That's the most, like, that's just a positive affirmation in itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're going with Go Purdy. With 97 out of 100. Was butt sex. What? Dang. What a pot. Yeah, all of a sudden, bro. It makes the people happy. That's classic. Bro. All right. It's provocative. Cool. It's provocative. I can dig it. Right on. That's fine. I'm not I'm not objecting to that. the middle of the road. What was that? 77. What? Yeah. That shit is hella positive. It is. Dang. Okay. Oh his gear, whack. His jewelry, whack. The way he doesn't even like to smile when he talks, whack. <laughs> Me, I'm tight as fuck. Okay, positivity. MP3 is, it can't be that. It can't. Where the money grows, that's pretty. I mean, I wouldn't say the lyrics are positive, but the production is oh, like. Oh, one, two, round, yeah. it, this takes into account production too. It's oh, got it. We it's have got it. no yeah, it's idea. Got it. Okay, well, I skincare really. is talking about self care and loving yourself. I think that's good. Yeah, for sure. All right, I'm going to go skincare. Number one was skincare. Oh, you motherfucker. You got it. You got Let's it. go. It's a conflict of interest. <laughs> is that the last one? Yeah. That was the last God one. God damn it. All right. Let's go. I'll hold that. Two, two. And I got two. Two, 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 baby. That's all I do. <laughs> <laughs> we, we always give a, uh, a prize or a punishment to the winner or loser. This week we On have. My own show, man. <laughs> this week oh, we have a prize. Show. Okay, no prize. Show. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's okay. No, it's all right. <laughs> I'm, I'm, fuck, I'm not complaining, bro. It's fine. So, due to our recent uh, budget increase, yeah, I have right. a two dollar euro coin oh, here. Two. Yeah. Oh, this is rare. Oh, wow. Wow. Two points for your travels. Two in Europe. euros. Yeah. Wow. yeah. Let me hold that. Yeah. Oh, that's my size, bro. Hey, that's crazy. Hey, man. I'll let you hold that, bro. Hold the two euros, bro. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever you find yourself in Europe, you can. Facts, oh, exactly. Hey, I got oh, family shit. out in France. <laughs> we coming. We balling. Yeah, that's the game. That's the game. I love hey. it. I love it, bro. Well, thank you so much, bro. bro that was fucking tight. You, that was a lot of fun. I appreciate that you having really me cool. out here. Of man. course, bro. Once again, it's Oblay Reed. That's O B L E. Do not forget the accent, or I'll cry in your face. Don't be disrespectful. That's what I'm saying, bro. R E E D. You can find me on all streaming by that. All socials is the same thing. And Linden Ave just came out two weeks ago on the day. So go check it out. I like it. You'll probably like it. <laughs> so I appreciate y'all I love having it. me out here. I love it. Yes, sir. Absolutely. It's the ANA podcast. ANA.